we were looking at active transport and we were looking at uh, P-type pumps, which are pumps that do active transport moving molecules from low to high concentration using ATP and hold on to the phosphate. And so as a specific example now, we're going to look at what's called the sodium potassium pump. So our cells have uh, these proteins within them, these transmembrane proteins, and they move sodium and potassium ions across the membrane. Right? And they use ATP to do it. They're going to do active transport in both directions. All right. The sodium potassium pump is important to study for a number of reasons, and it has a number of important jobs for the cell. A few of these jobs you know, include or a few of the things to consider about why the sodium potassium pump is so significant uh, are these. So why really focus on or study the sodium potassium pump? Well, one is that I said it's going to require ATP, right? Well, at any given time, it can be using up about as much as 30% of cellular energy. So that means if you have an energy budget, that's how much energy there is to spend, about 30%, which is a pretty large amount of that energy just goes to the sodium potassium pump. So that you must have to wonder why, you know, why would so much go to it, which, which is what we'll, we'll kind of get to it's other things that, that the sodium potassium pump does. Early embryos as they develop can, can input as much as 80% of their energy into the sodium potassium pump. So it's a very significant, um, thing that your cells require energy for and a large amount of energy has to be invested uh, in this pump. The sodium potassium pump helps establish membrane potential. So we, if you remember, um, we talked about membrane potential. Uh, it is the difference in concentration across the membrane. So that means having one side of the membrane having a more positive charge and one having a more negative. If you were try to remember back, which side of the cell was more positive or which side was more, more negative. So this is the cytoplasm, right? This is the outside of the cell, the extracellular side. The side that was more positive had the negative 70 milliamp. The difference was the interior of the cell, right? So the inside of the cell, remember negative 70 milliamp membrane potential, it's much more negative inside the cell in terms of charge than it is outside the cell. All right, outside the cell, it has a much more positive charge. And you can see now we're talking about ions. So obviously these ions are going to have something to do with it. And the sodium potassium pump is going to have something to do with it. There are other things involved. This is not the only thing that uh, establishes or causes membrane potential. Uh, it really establishes or say maintains or adds to that adds to, you know, membrane potential. Um, it is not the only cause of membrane potential. So just to clarify and keep keep that in mind. The other thing is we're not going to go into it specifically in detail here, at least. But osmosis is something that we had also discussed earlier. That's the movement of water across a membrane by diffusion from high to low concentration of water itself. Water is going to move from its own high concentration to low. It's going to happen all the time. Water may leave cells or water may come into cells. Cells may swell because of water pressure. Cells may shrivel because they've lost water. So living cells have to balance out that movement of water, which is something that they directly cannot control. So how do they still control it? It's by moving other things, but by moving things that they can control. So by moving ions across the membrane, they can balance out the diffusion of water or osmosis. So it the sodium potassium pump's purpose, or one of its purposes, uh, is to balance out osmosis or offset the movement of water across the membrane. So even though water is not directly involved in this process, it's, it's its own thing. It's osmosis. It's movement of water across the membrane. The movement of these ions can help do that. So it's called osmotic balance. And osmotic balance is incredibly important for whether you know, cells will li live or die uh, if they're in a stressful environment where the, the charge of the environment changes, the concentration of the environment changes. If the cells can maintain their own internal osmotic pressure, they'll survive. If they can't maintain that pressure in the changing environment, the cells will die. And it is the sodium potassium pump, which is one of the main features that helps counteract that for cells. So that's a little more of a, a different types of physiological aspect, and we'll get into it a little bit more later. But for now, this is just listing a couple of the important reasons why we study the sodium potassium pump. So now, what is it? Let's, then we'll actually get to it. 
So the way this is set up, and we started to set this up a little bit. Inside the cell, we have a more negative environment. Outside the cell, it is more positive. Outside the cell, we're going to have more sodium ions. So the sodium ion concentration outside the cell is high. We're going to have sodium ions in the cell too, but by comparison, it's a lower concentration. So sodium ions would want to diffuse from outside to inside the cell. Potassium is just the opposite. Okay, So potassium has a higher concentration inside the cell and a lower concentration of potassium outside the cell. So potassium would want to diffuse out. So our diffusion here is kind of opposite. Sodium would want to um, come in. Potassium would like to get out. Now that's ion, ionic diffusion based on concentration. If we look at this based on charge, if we think about it, um, and membrane potential, the outer environment is positively charged. Sodium ions are positively charged. They don't really like other things in the environment. They want to get out of the environment. The inside the cell environment is negative. They're positive. They like that environment, so they want to diffuse into the cell because they're positive and the inside the cell is negative. They're attracted to it. But the opposite case is here for uh, potassium. While potassium is in a high concentration in the cell and would like to diffuse out, it's also in an environment that's negatively charged. So it kind of likes that environment. It's attracted to other things in that environment. The outside of the cell environment is positively charged. It's electrically repelled from that. It really doesn't want to go outside the cell, even though it's in a lower concentration there because that's a positive environment. So you see membrane potential can affect movement of ions you know, in this way. In this case, though, we're not talking about diffusion. We're doing active transport. So with active transport, we're going to pump or push things opposite the direction. So what that means is that sodium ions are actually going to be moved from inside the cell out. What we have here, if this is the sodium potassium pump, it's our transmembrane protein, it actually has three binding sites for sodium ions. So we'll take this as a sodium. Uh, so if this is our sodium ions, say here, uh, the sodium ions can bind here into these three sites. So we actually have three sodium ions will come into this particular protein. Now the thing is it needs to change shape and then push those sodium ions to the outside of the cell. That would be active transport. It would be moving them from an area of low concentration to high concentration. But remember, that's going to require energy. It's going to require ATP. So we're going to bring in an ATP molecule. Adenosine triphosphate, one, two, three. And remember I said this is going to be a P-type pump. Okay, So as a P-type pump, what that means is that this phosphate is going to be broken off from the rest of the ATP. And it's going to leave you know, as ADP diphosphate, just the two phosphates. Okay, so I'm going to erase that whole thing. Okay, so an ATP came in and we broke off a phosphate and now that phosphate's attached to this pump. What this pump is going to do is change shape. So the, the pump is in going to uh, open up in this direction. It's going to close in this direction and it's going to look like this. You know, So it just opened up, it just closed and now these sodium ions are actually going to be released. The change in shape, just like in facilitated diffusion, uh, is going to be altered. And we get one, two, three sodium ions are going to be moved into this environment. So the energy from the ATP is going to be used to pump the sodium ions out of the cell. So that's three sodium ions out of the cell. We've used one ATP to do that. Now the thing is, keep in mind, we still have we still have the phosphate attached. As the protein changed shape and got rid of these sodium ions, what's happened is that these binding sites over here that I didn't talk about yet, I'm now going to talk about, they also change shape. These binding sites are attractive to not sodium, but to potassium. So now potassium ions. So these guys here, these potassium ions, so I'm going to say these potassium, I'll make these little round ones here. Potassium can come in. So potassium will enter into the same protein. 
and they'll bind to these sites. Now, the job of this particular pump is to, again, pump. It's going to push something from low to high concentration. But in this case, it's the, the opposite direction. So the sodium ions are going to be moved into the cell. Remember, the inside the cell has a high concentration of these potassium ions. So the potassium ions, I don't know if I just said sodium, but uh, it's potassium, uh, is going to be moved from outside the cell to the inside of the cell. But instead of three, it's going to be two. So it's two two potassium ions into the cell. Now, again, we need energy to do that. Where's the energy going to come from? Well, ATP. But the thing is, we don't bring in a second ATP. We just have the one. That first ATP that came in broke, released energy. That energy was used to pump the sodium ions, the three sodium ions, all three, all three at once not one at a time. And now it kept a phosphate. Remember, we said this is a P-type pump, right? It holds a phosphate. And by holding a phosphate, it's holding on to energy. Now what could happen is that this pump will break off the bond that was holding the phosphate, and the phosphate will leave. So the phosphate goes away. When that happens, though, energy is released. And that energy will be used to actually reverse this and change it back to the way it was before. So now this pump will change shape, and the two potassium ions, see these are our potassium ions, are going to move into the cell and add to the already high concentration of potassium. So the difference in concentration across the membrane, the high potassium inside, is caused by this pump, the sodium potassium pump. It pumps potassium into the cell. The high concentration of sodium outside the cell is also caused by this pump. It's pushing sodium out of the cell. Now you see it's moving them in opposite directions. It moves the, the sodium gets moved out. The potassium gets moved in. It's active transport in both directions. Each of them are moving from low to high concentration. They're just moving, you know, one is coming in, one coming out. There could be other types of active transport pumps that move things in the same direction. In this case, they're moving in opposite directions in terms of sidedness, but in terms of concentration, it's really the same sort of thing. Low to high for sodium, low to high for potassium. But the see, the great thing about the P-type pump is that it conserves energy. It allows the cell to use, instead of, doing active transport for one potassium, one ATP, two potassiums, two ATP, or, or sodiums, uh, three sodiums, three ATP, and then a potassium, four, five. Instead of using five ATP to do one ion at a time, this particular pump uses only one ATP to actually actively transport five ions. But it's moving, and it's moving three in one direction and two in the opposite direction. As it's doing that, Again, it's still, even though it conserves energy, it's still using up a lot, a lot of cellular energy. So you can imagine how much energy it would require uh, if it wasn't this efficient. Uh, it's just helping maintain the charge. Remember, the outside of the cell is mostly positive. The thing is, if we look at the balance, it's putting three pluses out of the cell. But when it works in the other direction, it's only bringing in two pluses, right? So sodium is plus one. Potassium is plus one. So if we forget what element they are, just look at the charge as an ion. Every time this pump works, it's putting three pluses out and only replacing it with two, which allows the internal environment to be more negative right, and charged. Right? So by because it's creating an imbalance of charge, right? This this pump. How it affects osmosis, again, it's not a direct thing that we're looking at, um, but by altering the concentration of these ions, it's then going to affect the concentration of water in different environments. And then that will affect diffusion of water, which is osmosis, uh, in sort of in an indirect way. But that's what this, this pump will be actively involved in doing that. So things to know about the sodium potassium pump. Make sure you know why it's important. Uh, make sure you know the basics of what it does. So its cost is, is one ATP 
And what it does is pump three sodium ions out of the cell and brings two potassium ions back into the cell. It kind of works twice. It's pumping twice. It pushes the sodium ions out. One, two, three. While it's still holding on to this phosphate. Okay, so it still has that phosphate while it's pumping. After that part happens and the potassium ions then enter the binding site, then it will break off this phosphate to get the energy that it needs to act as a pump again and push them from low to high concentration. Right? And it'll use that, that energy from that phosphate. And that is, uh, that's the basics, the basics of the sodium potassium pump. Now, the next topic we'll get into is called co-transport. And co-transport is going to be indirectly related to the sodium potassium pump. So you need to be familiar with the sodium potassium pump and what happens in general before you really uh, look at the, the co-transport material. So if this didn't make sense, you can go back to it. You could look at, look at there's uh, some other videos and all to look at uh, pumping, shows actively pumping and just movement. Basically, it's just showing the protein, just changing shape, back and forth, back and forth, three sodium ions one direction, two potassium the other, three sodium one direction, two potassium the other, three, two, and each time one ATP is used. One ATP comes in, phosphate attaches, pumps, breaks off the phosphate, pumps again, another ATP comes in, it resets it, and just kind of keeps going back and forth, back and forth. Right. That concentration gradient, and the thing I started off with about the, the diffusion, is going to come in next when we talk about co-transport.